The Three Cities is an annual cycling tour organised by Hope and Knowledge, an East London club since 2014. Each year, they choose a different charity to support. In 2019, the team raised over £70,000 for Little Hearts. Millions of children around the world suffer from congenital heart defects. And we at Muntada Aid believe that not enough is being done to tackle this issue. It is a major killer of children around the world. Since uh, launching this program, we've carried out over 30 missions and we have saved the lives of more than 2,000 children. I can't even explain with words the satisfaction it felt knowing the fact that we're working with Muntada Aid, the Little House Project, something that we've always wanted to work with. The Bangladesh Cardiac Programme was set up in 2015. We carried out three missions in Bangladesh and we realised that the numbers of children born each year with heart defects is vast and we needed to provide continuous uh, operations, ongoing operations throughout the year. So we set up a permanent cardiac programme at the Ibrahim Cardiac Hospital in Dhaka. That project uh, provides free treatment to children suffering from heart defects throughout the year. The tour started on the 26th of August. These otherwise regular next-door neighbours overcame the extreme weather, foreign terrain and pushed their bodies to the limit to sponsor 50 children's heart operations in Bangladesh. The preparation for Three Cities pretty much starts about nine months in advance. As soon as we've kind of identified the 26 riders, we found the three cities that we're going to do. We then, uh, and then we also found the charity that we want to work with. We go about looking for, we advertise it to our cycle club. Our selected criteria isn't based on ability. It's purely based on who's taking part in club ride. Our training plan starts pretty much straight after Ramadan, roughly between 12 to 13 weeks of training. So Alhamdulillah, so we, we got to Prague. Um, everyone got there safe and sound. The night before, we had a quick briefing where we talked about safety issues. So we started off around eight o'clock in the morning. The surface wasn't that great. You have the cobble streets, you had the tram line, which for us Brits are not really used to. Um, it's quite, actually quite hazardous place to cycle. So we knew that day one is to cover 100 miles with around six and a half thousand feet elevation. It's quite a lot. Um, and then the initial part, I must say, we hit about seven mile into our first day one, we had a little accident. Um, two people fell off the bike. Um, it was quite serious, uh, but people did bandage it up. Um, the support team came on board. Um, and despite the injury, um, the spirit was so high that they still wanted to continue cycling. Um, spare bike needed a bit of an issue. <laughs> so we had to on the spot fix the bike up, the spare bike as well. And then, alhamdulillah, we, we, we just continued. Unfortunately, with the first breakpoint, the support van weren't available. But the second breakpoint was around 55, 60 miles. And the interesting was from there was the main cross of the ride where the elevation starts. It was, it was a very, very tough one. Uh, what I do remember is um, when we got to the top of the hill, riders were literally just flat out on the, on, the, on, the, on the side of the road, literally just drinking and putting water through their head. And it was just pure exhaustion. Um, but spirit was still there, uh, took five minute rest. Um, and I think by that time we sat there and we all kind of came to conclusion that this was the steepest climb that we've done ever. <laughs> the hardest part of the day one was as after doing all the climbs, they got to the hotel and the hotel happens to be on the top of the hill. When they got to the top of the hill, some of them did 99.3, 99.7. They had to, they wouldn't want to end it. As much as exhausted they were, the legs were gone. They were cramping up the legs and they were on the already top of the hill. Some of the riders went back down again, kept going round and round up the hill just so that they can round it to 100 and then save the ride for that satisfaction of data entry. <laughs> there are thousands of kids who have benefited from our project where this little boy, Rakib, had he not had treatment at our centre, he would not have reached adulthood. But now after our surgery, he is now a healthy boy and he's no longer going through the agony and the pain of congenital heart defects. So the family are delighted now that, and what meager resources they have, 
no longer has to be spent for treatment of Rakib. They can spend this money on Rakib's education and to give him a future. So day two, we started off in a very nice location. It was right next to the hotel, a 13th century castle. And so it was a very nice setting to start off from. Everyone can get a fair share of the Ajr for this operation. And while these children are alive and every benefit, every Ajr they do, whether it's Salah, charity, every, we are going to get reward for that as well. So the first breakpoint was about 20 miles. It was a nice, easy first part of the ride. Very nice scenic crew going through beautiful lakes around the sides. I remember coming to one of the biggest climbs that we hit, uh, which was, we, we nicknamed it the wall, because where everybody had a GPS device, we can see the elevation map. And normally you see elevation in, in a certain trajectory. This one, when we looked at it before we turned into it, it looked like a wall that we were about to hit. Um, that was a very tough one. Uh, again, tested the riders to, to, the, to the limit. So after the uh, second break point, the, um, we started we, we start setting off and what happened was we kind of timed it wrong. Most of us realised that by the time we get to the third break point, it was actually get really dark. My group hit, knowing the fact that you know, we were 15 miles away and it got dark now, we didn't even take our lights from the van. We had to wait there, support team, um, had to eventually come back with our belongings, give us lights. It was a bit of an issue there and some of the brothers obviously by that time exhausted and killed in. By second day it was really tough, like I said it was another hundred miles to do, another six and a half thousand feet elevation. By the end of, by the, by the time they got to the third break point, unfortunately a couple of the brothers decided that it just, they just couldn't take it no more. H and K Cycle Club have done a tremendous job. They've raised £70,000. £70,000 will enable us to carry out life-saving heart operations on 50 little vulnerable little children who would have otherwise died before reaching adulthood. Now they will go on to live a normal life. They will perhaps have children of their own. They will be valuable members of their community and will be able to contribute to their society. So day three, alhamdulillah, um the two tough days were done. We're setting off from uh, Krems, heading towards Vienna. Nice flat route, very, very scenic crew going through, uh, heading towards Vienna. So the first break point, again, like I said, there was no, nothing difficult about it. Everyone just chilled out. And then the second break point we got to, um, we, we went to a little cafe, we had a little time. But one thing I did tell, tell everyone, even though it's gonna be a flat route all the way through, there was gonna be one big climb. I didn't tell the riders at that time, but what it was, it was actually a mountain that they were going to climb. Um, it was about eight mile long climb, and they covered about 1,200 feet elevation just in one particular climb. And the satisfaction I saw when the riders got to the bottom of that, or sorry, not bottom, the top of that hill, um, the, the rapid response team were there, um, little and by was splashing water on their faces, and it's almost like a sense of satisfaction, achievement for coming down or coming up all the way to the top. Yeah, so that, that was the main highlight of day three, was that be one big climb. To be honest with you, until the end of day three is when I feel as though a big burden has been lifted off my shoulder. It is a massive task that we take on board, um, a project that knows no boundaries. You know, it's not working just in a particular country, it's working in Europe, it's working in Africa, it's working in, in Asia. Um, that's what drew us to this sort of project um, and knowing the fact that the money that we raised and a successful three cities put them together you know for myself and HNK it has to be one of the best three cities that we've done so far. <laughs>